Today I will, uh, I will uh, basically summarize uh, this, this, this type of machinery. I will start with just the, the standard results, how people have computed this and, and, and see some of the issues that arise. Um, yesterday I also, um, I also discussed uh, quite a bit the, the linear theory part, the fact that there are various scales in the universe, some of which uh, we use uh, for observations like the BAO scale, or, but, but they, they, they will have, as we will see today, when we, when we look at some of these expressions, um, the fact that uh, the power spectrum in our universe is not a power law because of matter radiation equality it turns over and so on, it will have some consequences when, when we look at, uh, at some of the results of, uh, of these calculations. I, I, will, uh, I will try to, um, I, I'll, I'll show you the formulas, but I will also try to discuss more, more or less what, what, they, what they have inside so that we don't lose track of the intuition of what's going on, okay? So, um, okay, so let's, let's start by discussing the results in, uh, of perturbation theory. So, uh, so as I told you yesterday, the standard thing to do is to, uh, you, you want to solve the, for the motion of, uh, of some particles or some fluid, um, that it's interacting gravitationally, so you always have the Poisson equation up there, and you also have some, either some fluid equation, that's what's usually called the Eulerian perturbation theory when we solve these equations perturbatively, um, and, um, or you can solve for a bunch of particles, um, and uh, like an embody simulation does. These equations then are, are not uh, linear equations, so as you can see, for example, in the fluid equation, there's the delta times the divergence of the velocity and so on, these convective terms. Um, and so, um, uh, if you, if, if you the, 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 the approach that I, I will take now is to just try to solve this equation assuming all of these quantities, delta and V, are all small, and so I will uh, solve the linear equations, which is what I already did yesterday, and then plug these linear solutions in the, in the, in the right-hand side as a source and solve again, I get a second-order result, then I plug it back in, a third-order result, and blah, 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 and so I'll get some sort of series into this uh, in, 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 uh, solution, okay? And, and this, uh, you know, we've known for a very long time what the form of that thing is. Um, now, as you can see from the equations, uh, the, the nonlinear terms are sometimes velocity, sometimes delta, and as I was trying to explain, show you yesterday, those uh, different terms, their power spectrum looks different. So for example, while the velocity or the displacement power spectrum has a peak somewhere, the density power spectrum rises to small scales. So not all those terms are created equal, but for now we will just uh, keep them all as if they were small, uh, small quantities and just, uh, I'll, I'll just show you that, that solution. The other thing to, to keep in mind is that um, if we are solving this equation under the assumption that, for example, delta is a very small quantity, the overdensity is very small, we know that this is true on very large scales, right? But it's not true on small scales. So that uh, solution that we're going to find, we don't expect it to be valid everywhere or for everything because on those, not necessarily it will be the case that, that uh, I mean, the assumptions that we're going to make are going to break down at some point, okay? Uh, now, we, we still do know that when we look at things on very large scales, the linear theory and so on looks very good, lo does very well. So um, even though the equations on some range of scales, the assumptions that I'm going to make break, for some whatever reason, it will be the case that if I go to large scales, the, the simple thing still is okay. So it's not, things are not uh, so dramatic that, uh, that uh, when, when this, this perturbative solution that, that, that uh, I find breaks on some range of scales, it pollutes everything forever in a disastrous way that I will never be able to get anything out. So I'm still, apparently at least at very sufficiently large scales, things are okay. The solution is, uh, linear theory is fine. Uh, but if you want some of the point of what I'm trying to do is to try to keep track of these mistakes that I'm making on the small scales and how they do pollute at some level, they will make a correction to the, to the thing that I calculate on large scale. So let's first uh, discuss the, 
Just, just, just uh, uh, and the last thing to, to say, uh, remind you, is that when yesterday we solved the linear equations, we found that, for example, I think I, I showed you the linear equations for the displacement. They, uh, um, the, the equation did not contain any gradients or any spatial derivatives. So the Green's function was just something involving time. So it didn't. Uh, the time evolution of things did not depend on the sh on the. On, on how, for example, on the wave number, you were um, every, everybody, every scale evolved in the linear theory with the same in the same way, just the growth factor. That's what we saw yesterday. So, um, so if you want, the problem is separable in a spatial and time dependence. Okay, but so let's let's discuss. Uh, le this is just uh, some. I mean, there, there's no point in uh, some of these things you can do by yourself. So it's. So what, what 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 is the what what is the, the story? So as I told you, the, uh, let's do the, the case of uh, of the fluid. Okay. So what, what to to get this equation, what I did from the previous one is just in the in the um, uh, velocity equation, I took a divergence and I call, I'm calling theta the divergence of this velocity. So you have the two equations: the continuity equation with some quadratic term on the right hand side, the velocity equation also with some quadratic term on the right hand side. And this quadratic term, if you want, if you write them in, in Fourier space, so uh, in, in the formula it involves derivative, the gradient, and, and so if you write things in Fourier space, you just uh, say, uh, for example, the, 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 this thing, this star over here just means you take it, it, the, the, the nonlinearity was velocity times delta, and so there is some vertex, some coupling that takes a, a velocity and a delta and produces something, some source for this equation. This, on this side, two velocities produce, you, you, um, you, you, you get uh, something on that hand side. So, so, uh, so um, to solve this equation, let's start by uh, in, uh, the, the structure of the solution, this perturbative solution, um, looks something like this. You can, you, can, uh, you can say, I will count the, so, so I, will, uh, I will have a, qu a quadratic solution, a cubic solution, and so on. So these are labeled by an N. Their time dependence, uh, as I was telling you, just factors out. In Einstein de Sitter, the time dependence of, uh, of um, uh, something that is to second order will be the, the scale factor square, third order scale factor cube, and so on. So if you just put these ansatz and plug it into this equation, you find what uh, these delta Ns should be. Uh, and they are written in, 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 in this way, okay? So um, if you want, uh, um, schematically, you, you, you take um, two of these modes, they interact, um, and so this you, in linear, linear, they interact some way, they create a second order solution, okay? All, all, let, let's just draw a, dry, a diagram. So let, 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 let me just uh, put up this diagram that I'm going to show you in the next transparency. Uh, and uh, well, there I'm, I'm, uh, now I'm doing it horizontally, okay? So there's some initial time, there's some initial conditions. So remember, we are solving this equation with some stochastic initial conditions created from inflation before the Big Bang, so, uh, or the hot part of the Big Bang take two initial conditions, they interact in some way, you create some new mode, perhaps comes another of these initial conditions in interacting some other way, you create something on third order, okay? So each of these vertices is labeled by some time, tau one, tau two, okay? So the form of the solution will always be, these uh, initial conditions evolve up to tau one, these initial conditions evolve up to tau two, they interact with one of these vertices, alpha or beta, depending on it, whether this is density or velocity, on whether this coming out is density or velocity. So I will just, for now, I will pretend that there's only one variable, okay? So it interacts, then from then on, I'm, I'm getting, the, the, the solution will have to do with the Green's function here of this uh, equation. It, it, it evolves up to the time tau two. Then comes another one of these modes that has been inter uh, evolving all the way to tau two. Again, it interacts some alpha and beta and you create a tau three, okay? So here's the Green's function, okay? And so what you would have to do is do an integral over the time of the first vertex, an integral over the time of the second vertex, times these Green's functions, and you get some answer at the very end, okay? 
So that now the the in 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 Einstein the Sitter, so first of all, this Green's function does not depend, it's just some functions of time, right? That's what I was telling you that this equation does not involve uh, spatial derivatives. So it's just some integrals that you need to do. And and so usually people condemn all this, because this delta say in Einstein, they see that this is going like A, this is going like A, so this is a source with A squared integrated times the Green's function, you know whatever that is, and it will end up going also like A squared, and so this goes like A, this cubic source goes like A cubed integrated with G, it will give you, an, it will give you A cubed. So you, you can figure out what those integrals are, and it turn out that the third order in Einstein, they see they will just go as a cube. If you calculate something to fourth order, it will go as a to the fourth as a, as a, as a function of the final time, right? A. So we are trying to compute delta 3 of some momentum k at some time tau, okay? And the form of the expression would be you take, let's be more explicit then, we take some initial conditions with various momentums. Q1, well, I don't know how I was writing it there. Yeah, Q1, Q2, okay? Initial condition with momentum Q3, okay? We're trying to com com compare, um, compute something with final momentum K at a, fi a final time tau. First thing to note is that the momentum is conserved, so the sum of all of these QIs will need to give you K, okay? And, uh, and after that, you just need to track this time dependence, and you realize in Einstein the Sitter, it will be that if you com combine three things, the time dependence will be A cubed. If you combine four things, it will be A to the fourth, okay? And then the actual, um, so, so then you will end with a formula that connects N of these deltas to the final delta here, okay? With some, Remember that, this, uh, that these vertices involve the, the derivative. So in, in, in the Fourier space, it will involve the, the various momenta, okay? So that's why the, the structure of the final, if I do all of these integrals, I can block this into some big block like that, and I think that, and I say that I have N of these guys coming in, produce some delta final, okay? So there'll be a formula that shows me as a function of delta, if I put three of them, I combine them in some way, and I will get a time dependence, which will be A cubed, and some, some sort of kernel that tells me how I create something of momentum K out of things with momentum Q1 to Qn, okay? And so that's, uh, that's kind of the, the structure of this, uh, of this uh, solution, okay? Is this clear or, or is not clear, okay? Yeah, yes or no? Any questions? Okay, so, so there you have them, delta n, some integral of the initial conditions with some kernels. These kernels involve k1 over k2 ratios of all of these momenta, okay, um, that, that are going in, okay? So now, um, great, so, so what, uh, so in this, uh, so this is the, and perhaps um, maybe I should, uh, I should uh, attach some words to this diagram, okay? So, how can we think of this diagram? For example, something like this, you can say, oh, I have the momentum K or a momentum Q1. Let's start from the There is some other momentum Q2. Perhaps, let's say, for example, that the momentum Q2 is very long, okay, compared to Q1. So this is a short mode, and there is a very long mode, Q2, okay? So perhaps you would want to say, oh, this Q1 lives in a background of the long Q2, gets affected by the Q2, and as a result of, of this, I get some different delta of, okay, Q1 plus Q2 in this case, okay? So you can, if this Q2 is much smaller than Q1, perhaps you would want to say, oh, what's happening here is that Q1 lives in a different, slightly different background than FRW, slightly, there's a very long over density here, it's a slightly, you know, curved universe over there, with positive curvature, there is under this universe and so on. So that might be one way of uh, of um, of talking about this. Okay. So 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 uh, you know, in each of the cases, so, so 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 perhaps you, you should always think in this way for each of these diagrams what they actually mean. And so so for when you go to delta three, you are, for example, uh, 
thinking of this mode Q1, living in some background and, and go, computing things to second order in, the per, in this perturbation of this background. For example, that, that is the words that you would attach is if all of these Qs are much, much smaller than, than this guy over here. It's just some modified background. You're computing how this thing evolves to second order. If you do like this, it would be to second order in the perturbation of the background, okay? Great, so, um, so you do this. And now, let's say that you want to compute uh, the, the power spectrum. So first of all, um, we, we can start with the linear power spectrum. As I was saying yesterday, I was defining this. OK, let me just keep. So delta of Q1, delta of Q2, linear power spectrum here, the linear perturbation theory will give me I was defining yesterday to be 2 pi cubed, delta function, q1 plus q2, the power spectrum. Okay, So this is just uh, um, bilinear. Uh, this is just the definition of the statistical properties of these initial perturbations. Okay? And now I am computing uh, how, uh, how things are interacting and changing, so I will compute uh, so I, I, I will, let's say I want to compute the first correction to this power spectrum. So what I will need to do? So I will need to compute this solution, OK? And then take final expectation value. So I would say that delta now, OK, delta, the full delta, will be the linear one, a second order one, a third order one, blah, 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 blah. So we have to figure out uh, to what order to stay to do this calculation. But let's, the answer will be the third order, as you will see now. And then what we are going to do? So we are going to now take two of these deltas and take the expectation value, OK? So when I take two of them, two linear deltas will give me this power spectrum, OK? These are, I'm assuming, Gaussian initial conditions. So the initial conditions are only set by, by um, their power spectrum. That's the only thing that I need to know. Now, when I square this, I have a term which is delta 1 times delta 2. That is 0 because it's, uh, so remember that delta 2 is some, sort, is some quadratic thing in delta, 2 deltas times this kernel f2. This delta 3 is 3 deltas times this kernel f3, and so on. So if I want to get something non-0, and the only thing that these initial deltas have is a two-point function, my only options are to either, okay, the first one times one, it's okay, it's a quadratic thing, but then if I want to have something proportional to the square of the power spectrum, I need to take either two of this delta two, one, or, so delta two times delta two gives me something that is non-zero, that this one is different from zero, but I can also take delta three times delta one, okay? Both of them are different from zero, both of them are proportional to the square of the power spectrum, OK? Because I, I will have four of these deltas, and I take in pairs, and I get, OK? This one, delta 1 times delta 1, is just the power spectrum to the first order. This one, second, two, two square, OK? So if I just want to compute the first correction to this power spectrum, all I need to do is stay. If I'm counting everybody as if it's of the same size, which is what I'm doing now, I need to do this calculation up to the third order. And I need to keep, so I need to basically compute this diagram, delta 3. On one side is delta 3. So on the other side is just the linear delta. OK, so I'm computing the correlation between the third order delta and a first order delta. So perhaps I, I, can, uh, I can do like this. Perhaps I can say of the two sides that I have in this diagram, in w one of these is just take two at second order, OK? One side, the other side. So this would be I compute something to second order here. I compute something to second order there. And I take the expectation value, and I get the final power spectrum. Or I compute this to the third order, OK? And this one, I just leave linear theory, OK? So then when I take expectation value, I will take, in this one, I will connect this with this, and this with this, or you know, all the symmetric combinations. This will give me one power spectrum. This will give me another power spectrum. Yes, just a second. In this one, I will say connect this with this. I will get one power spectrum here and connect one, this one with one on the other side, OK? Yeah? 
delta 1, delta 1, because I'm computing, I'm computing delta squared. That, that's something that if I were to compute the three-point function, the bispectrum we call it, and I want to say what is the uh, expectation value of delta, 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 then this exactly the first non-zero case is when I take one linear, one linear. The, the la this one of them needs to be more than linear, so in order to give me non-zero, so th this will give me the first bi the bispectrum. And this is non-zero, OK? Yeah. So now, but because I'm just computing the correction to the power spectrum, I only have two deltas. And so these are my two options, OK? Um, any questions about this or not? Okay. Yeah? Sorry, sorry? Um, Yes, there, there's physical intuition for the, in configuration space, and there's also physical intuition in Fourier space. Let me talk about all this physical intuition in just a sec, OK? So uh, because up to now, I'm just giving you the algebra. I'm not doing anything, OK? So the questions for you to uh, keep in mind is, OK, there were various things going into this kernel. So sometimes was the velocities interacting, sometimes the delta. So here I'm keeping as everybody was going to be the same. So inside this, this term, which looks like some p squared term or this one, there are different contributions. May not, they will not all be of the same size. Okay, but here I'm just doing that. Okay. So another question that you might want to ask, a related question, perhaps is more like if I want to compute something with some precision, when do we need to stop? Okay? Because in reality, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm trying to have some useful set of tools to do something, that's the most important question, right? If I don't even know how, when I sh I'm sh supposed to stop, this whole thing is kind of useless, okay? Because how, if, yeah, what, what, what is the point of doing here if I don't know when I get the results, should I trust this result or not? Okay, I need to have, develop that intuition, okay? Uh, so, okay, so that's, uh, that's um, the, the um, in, so let me just flash another one, another of these, uh, the, the story for, in Lagrangian perturbation theory, formally looks identical, okay? Slightly different vertices, uh, there's now cubic, but there's slightly, but at the end of the day, looks very much the same. So if, there is, if you're computing this displacement, there will always be, you, in, at least at the level of these pictures, there, uh, you put here S instead of delta, and you change the F to something else that you compute in this way, and then you're, it looks the same, OK? So let's not bother with that. I mean, then the answers are going to be different and so on. I mean, it's interesting, but, uh, but, but what, what you need to do is the same. So, so I was telling you before that, uh, that um, if this is going to be useful for anything, I'd better be able to understand if, you know, what's the sizes of these things and when should I stop, this kind of stuff. So now this is quite not so easy, okay, to do. Uh, or, I mean, it takes, it's not difficult, but it, it's, you have to think about it a little bit. But so, um, so let's, let's, the easiest thing to do is, um, is, uh, Think uh, that what would ask the following question: What would happen if I was doing this calculation not in our universe where the power spectrum has some shape, but let's assume that this power spectrum, initial one I'm talking about, um, is uh, just a power law. Okay, just a power law, no scale in the thing. Okay, so the only real scale is the nonlinear scale. So um, if uh, so. Yeah, so, so in other words, this uh, k cubed p of k, so remember, this is connected to this uh, exercise that I asked you yesterday to do. This thing, this uh, um, would be, now it's, it's a power law, so I, I, let me assume that p of k is just proportional to k to the n. This is the standard convention. So this k cubed p of k that tells you the amplitude of the density fluctuations per logarithmic interval in k looks like some k to the power n plus 3. It's dimensionless quantity. So there'll be, at each redshift, there will be some k nonlinear that makes the whole thing uh, uh, the, the, uh, dimensionless. So this will be a function. Remember, this is a function of time. These scales with time 
as the growth factor square. So this k nonlinear depends on time. It goes at 2 to the n divided by n plus 3 minus, you know, so just, just from here. Um, so, um, but let's take that example. So I told you in, in that example, so uh, if you are just omega equals to 1 and, uh, and, um, and, um, and everything was a power law, then the, the, the final answer, full answer of, of the, not the perturbation theory answer, but the, 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 the answer you will get from anything, the simulation or whatever, the true answer for delta, it just needs to be some function of k over k nonlinear, okay? So this we were, I told you to, to show, okay? So believe me, okay? So if I know this, then now I can, I can say, make, maybe I can use that to know how, uh, how, um, how, how many terms I need to keep. And, uh, and the, the um, so, so, so uh, it, it's, it's, it's easy to figure out in the following way. Um, so you can see from here that uh, the power spectrum is proportional so the, the power spectrum is proportional to k nonlinear to the n plus 3 in the denominator, okay? So if I want to know, so in other words, let's say I computed, what I've done right now is compute delta, I, I express delta as some delta linear, the initial one, some delta that I've computed with this diagram, the first correction is usually called delta 1 loop. Del imagine I went more and more, and then the two loops, blah, 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 okay? Now, the, the, the properties of this thing is that I've stopped in this expansion, I've stopped with a fixed number. The answers now, the ones that I showed you, depend on power spectrum squared. If I had gone here, for example, up to the fifth delta 5 times delta 1 would depend on power spectrum cube. Okay, so this looked like a series in which you get terms that are power spectrum square. If I went higher order, I will get things power spectrum cube, power spectrum to the fourth, and so on, okay? So this is a, a, a series that is well, uh, it's in the series of, in the, in, of the power spectrum, okay? But the, the, the power spectrum is the only thing in the calculation where k nonlinear is entering, right? Because this, this variable k nonlinear is the only place, it's not in these kernels, these f's are just some ratios of k's, okay? So in this answer, which is integrals in, in uh, momentum of various power spectrum, the, you can count how many k nonlinears there will be in the answer uh, by counting how many power spectrum appear in the calculation, because the only place where when you plug things back in, the, the, this k nonlinear will enter is in here, okay? So this guy has certain k over k nonlinear, you know, the, the, so, so if you put two powers, if you put just one power spectrum in the linear thing, it goes like that. The k over k, the, the k nonlinear in the one loop is the square of this, just the dependence on this guy, the square, the cube, and so on, okay? But the full answer is just a power of k over k nonlinear, okay? So if this is going to work somehow, it, this will give me k over k nonlinear. Well, this is the linear one, so it's just that, n plus 3. This guy will better give me the, the k nonlinear I know is the square of this thing, so, but the whole thing is just a power of k over k nonlinear. So it better give me k over k nonlinear to the n plus 3 squared and blah, blah, blah. I don't know when I do, basically, in this, in this particular case, after I'm doing all this integral, all of this stuff, all I'm doing is trying to figure out a coefficient here, okay? Because the functional form needs to be this, okay? So, I mean, assuming that these are things of order one, then you can see that, uh, that uh, okay, you can, you can see the sizes of the various terms. And you now see what you might expect. That if you think like this, whenever k becomes of the size of k nonlinear, all the terms are of the same size, so the whole thing is just a disaster. But uh, if I'm going uh, away from k over k nonlinear, these things are, are smaller and smaller and smaller, okay? And if I want a given precision, I just want, need to ask at what point, I, I know exactly, the, 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 depending on this n, I know exactly how each of these terms scale with the ratio of k over k nonlinear. So if I want to have a certain precision, for example, when k over k nonlinear 
is 0 0.1, I just figure out when I need to stop. If I want the corrections to be 10 to minus 3, I would need to go on until this term is of this size and the higher order terms are smaller, OK? So this, is, is this clear or no? Yeah? Yeah. So yeah, basically, if I can, if I try to summarize your question, you're asking me, are you sure that this is what is this? I mean, are you sure that you don't pollute the the the? Are you sure that you don't pollute the large scales with the small scales? Are you sure that, that the, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And in fact, I will pollute. But it's not so bad, OK? And so, uh, but, but I'm just now giving you the standard. So this is what you might naively think, OK? And then I will, I will see, you will, when you're trying to do this, you will, um, you, I will show you places where things become weird, OK? And, and all of your things that you are, uh, suspecting will at some level show up, okay? But let me tell you the, 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 the physical reason why it's not so bad, or at least one physical reason why it's not so bad. So, so imagine you have some uh, long wavelength mode, okay? And it's doing something. What is it doing, okay? So mean density of the universe, over density, under density, okay? So what happens? In the, what is the, the, the thing that we're trying to solve? What is it doing, okay? So the matter here will collapse, will form some object, okay, by accreting some of the stuff here, okay? So it's true. At some point, the motions are so large that this perturbation theory is not going to give me reliable answers. However, what will happen is not that thing will come here and explode and come everywhere and, no, it's the opposite. It will stick together and form a really small thing, okay? So in this gravitational collapse, you end up forming a halo whose size is, so when it's just forming, it's quite much smaller than the, the its density is higher than the, you take the region, you make it collapse, it ends up with a very high density compared to the mean density of the universe, so a factor of 200 in the spherical collapse. And so this means this thing is smaller than what it started with. So yes. We do, I don't know how to calculate this, but clearly it's not going to be terrible because it's just sticking there. And from the outside, for example, if I want to ask the question how this matter affects the motion of something very far away, okay, which is kind of what, what we are trying to do, something, understand the motions of things on scales much larger than the K nonlinear. Let me just say that this is somehow the nonlinear scale. It forms some object, okay? What, 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 and now I have something far away, like the BAO scale or something, far away from this nonlinear scale, uh, what is the effect, okay? So it's true, when I do this calculation, I'm, it looks like I will be to totally out of control. However, it's not so bad. The thing is forming some little blob here. And from the outside, you know that how, the, the, as long as this has the this, this certain given mass, its distribution is it completely irrelevant for what's going to happen, what the outside person will see. I mean, there will be the multiple moments, but they decay quickly, okay? So it's not going to be too bad, okay? So you'll reorder mass here, and it'll do something, and we'll try to calculate what it'll do, but it's not the end of the world. This is the reason it's not the end of the world, as long as you're looking at this from the far away, okay? Yeah, the, the intuition that you, 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 you take, you, you take a, a K and you take a distance and the relevant K is 1 over R, and it's, it's more or less correct. So, so uh, this will work. So you can, it's easier to think in, in, uh, in real space if you want to do this analogy, but the equations will show you that what will happen. Then you, an equivalent statement is that if you want to uh, co compute things for a very low K, 
you know, the details of the very high K will not matter too much. It will, they will matter suppressed by some ratio of the scales to some power, which we will for, figure out. Yeah, there was another question, yeah. Yeah, oh, good. So, so um, about the transfer function and so on, I'm, I'm doing these calculations all in the late universe. So all the physics of the transfer function is happened already, and I'm taking as if the initial power spectrum was actually the one with the transfer function, as if that was all there was. And that's not a very bad approximation because most of the growth of structure, I mean, it happens later in the history of the universe, much later than that recombination. So it's okay. But... Uh, or at the matter radiation equality. But there are small corrections associated with that. But so, um, yeah. Any, any other questions? No? Okay, so, um, okay, so, so this, this plot is uh, um, so, supposed to, so in, in this na naive thing, so, is, so the various corrections go as k over k nonlinear to some power. So these, these lines here, the ones that look, uh, so in the particular case in which n is minus 3 is a very bad situation because everybody is the same power, right? Uh, so that one is bad, okay? So, but the, everybody is the same, and this, the, this is a really bad situation. But we are not, our universe it doesn't, is not there. And so these lines, it, it, this is for the n in our universe minus, around the nonlinear scale is somewhere around here, okay? And so... Uh, the various terms go as k over k. This just give you, this, these lines just give you the, I mean, it's just n plus 3 to some, it's not the very profound, okay? n plus 3 times 2 times 3, okay? So that's why they go all to 0 here. These are other terms that we will discuss later. Um, but th this would be the, 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 the naive thing to do or the first thing to do. Uh, one thing to keep in mind as I was, so, I, so now the question, okay, if I'm going to use this intuition for our universe, okay, then I need to pick, okay, I, if I want to tell you, compute this to some precision, and this is the only thing, your intuition is based on this, you need to tell me what n to plug into this formula to know when to stop, okay? Now, unfortunately, our universe is not a power law, okay? So this is the slope of our universe as a function of k. Which are you going to pick, okay? That's kind of the problem, okay? Now, for... For the purpose of the first thing to to think about is to say, okay, well, what's what's happening? Let, let's look at the scales that are in the non that are becoming nonlinear. Okay, there's an n associated. There's a slope of the power spectrum in that region. Probably all of the nonlinearities are related to that, and so let me pick that n. Okay, so as we were discussing yesterday, the nonlinear scale is around point something, point one or something, point two, and so. N is somewhere between minus 1.5 and minus 2, okay? So that would be, if you had to decide what to do, that would be the first thing to do. Decide, I would going to invent that N is more or less minus 1.5 or something, and just use this formula to figure out when to stop with N equals minus 1.5, okay? But the universe is not a power law, blah, 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 and then, so, I mean, then, then this is not super good, but it's okay. It's something to do. So, um, so let's, let's, uh, let me discuss uh, a little bit further um, some of the intuition of the result, okay? So, um, so what is the result then? The result at the lowest order that we have is something along this following line. P is P linear, okay, plus, okay? Then there will be some integral. So there's two terms, okay? Let's look... Uh, I, I told you, this guy and this guy, okay? So now, what are these two terms? You take expectation value over this uh, different power spectrum and you integrate over the momentum, okay? So that's, so you're basically computing the average effect, say, on a K mode of all of the other modes, okay? So the answer at this uh, order will be something with, involves one integral in all the momentum of all the other modes, okay? So you're trying to figure out what happens to mode K in the background or in the presence of all these other modes of every momenta. You take expectation value over those, mom, over the typical, uh, or the, the, the size of the, of the fluctuations of these other momentum. You integrate over all of them and you get some average effect. That's what we are computing, okay? 
And so the answer will always involve, in this particular case, an integral in momentum, d cube q, okay? The, the, the power spectrum, so now there's two, there's two, maybe we should be a little bit more careful. Not the following, there's, I'm trying to compute delta of some k here, delta of k, delta of k, okay? Um, this one, say for example, is q. This one needs to be, if this one is k, this one, okay, let's start with this one. This one is easier. Q1, Q2, K, okay? So this one will give me a power spectrum of Q, a power spectrum of Q1, a power spectrum of Q2, but they need to add to K, okay? So it will be an integral of the power spectrum of Q and a power spectrum of K minus Q, okay? With some kernel, which will be this F2 squared, okay? F2 is just this vertex here. So there's one for this guy, there's one for this guy. This one is Q, also this one is Q1, this one is Q2, boom. So you get that formula, okay? For this one, however, it's slightly different because this one is K. This means that when I take, this one then is the power spectrum of K because it's delta of K times this guy expectation value. One is fixed to the external one because on this side I'm just doing linear, okay? So this other term will be P of K, P of K and then the integral d cube q of this f3 p of q, okay? Something like this, okay? And so you can see, for example, this is what's coming from this p13, this is this p22. You can see that uh, this guy is proportional to the p of k, for example, while here all of the p's live inside the integral, so they are slightly different, okay? But so now, what I want to discuss is, so you have this formula, so now let's uh, look at the inside of this formula and try to figure out, um, and try to figure out uh, what, uh, what are the various physical effects. Let's try to get some intuition for the formula, okay? So the question then that we are asking is, we have the power spectrum of K, okay? And we are computing the average effect on that uh, of, uh, of the modes of another momentum, Q. So it's natural to ask the question, what, what is the effect of modes whose Q is much smaller than the K I'm interested in? So I'm computing this is the one I'm interested in. There's all the other momenta that are interacting with this one and so on. And then the other question is, what is the effect from the Qs that are much bigger than K, okay? So split it there and figure out what, what is happening, okay? Um, perhaps, w w w w um, le le let's go back to this diagram. I was t telling you that perhaps to these diagrams you, sh you should attach some words. So, uh, for example, let's consider the case of, uh, of two Q of Qs that are very much higher than K, okay? So, and in this diagram, for example. So what you're thinking about here is that you have two momenta that are very high. Now, the K is not there. You created the K. You're asking the question of the two momenta that were very high, how likely or how big a K they create, okay? Because in the initial conditions, you didn't have the K, and the two Qs created it, okay? And then you average over all of these. So these two high Qs maybe create stochastically some K that you're interested in, okay? But the, if the, these Qs were high, they almost cancel each other. Q1, minus, Q1 is almost minus Q2 to give you K, okay, because the Q is much bigger. And so you are creating the K. Here, however, it looks slightly different because this guy had the K in the initial conditions. He's interacting with some Q1, then interacting again with minus Q1 to give you K again. So here, the words might be more like how the mode K that was already in the initial conditions is affected, is disturbed by the Qs, okay? They look slightly different, okay? But, um, okay, so, uh, and, 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 and this will result uh, in uh, these things being of different, of different size. Now, with very high K, 
very high Q trying to create a K, this will turn out to be quite difficult, actually, because if you want to create some very long wavelength mode out of small flux, something that is, you know, on average is on very small scales, the chances that you create something very big is difficult. It will go like some sort of square root of N, and so that, 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 that will make that particular part of the contribution not too large in our universe, okay? So that, that's why it's useful sometimes to attach some of these words. But, um, so let's see. So when you look at this, so le le let me tell you there's, uh, there's various, uh, um, there's various, the, the other thing I, I um, uh, one needs to then figure out is what are these F2s and F3s that are v various uh, kernels uh, depending on the ratios of Ks and Qs and so on. What are they and how do they behave in these two limits, okay? So now I'm going to take the limit one of the queues is very much longer, long mode compared to the other one and the opposite limit, okay? So then these Fs will, will become very simple things, okay? And then you can figure out what, uh, what the answer is in those limits easily. And let me tell you what, uh, what, uh, what you discover, okay? What you discover is the following, or what you see is the following. So if you ask the question of uh, modes that are First, let's start with this one. Modes, what is the effect of a very long wavelength mode on a mode of long wavelength Q? So it's the long mode Q, okay, and the short modes K, okay? What is the effect? Okay, the effect, in the end, it will be very easy. So the effect, you, you live in the long wavelength. This is just for the purpose of this little K, so let's just, more, uh, what is this? this these guys here live in a universe that is, has a slightly different omega, a slightly curved universe, different curvature over the, over the ones over here than the ones over there, okay? So, in other words, the, the, um, the, the effect of, of the long mode on this guy is proportional to delta, which is the change in the curvature, or the, how, so, or the tidal field that this long mode is producing. That, so, if you want to ask the question of what is the effect on K of this delta, you will discover that you need to add, well, we are taking the expectation value, but it will be then the integral of all of the, all of the fluctuations, the power spectrum, d cube Q of delta. So the power spectrum of delta, this, this quantity, let me call it the epsilon, the size of the delta fluctuations up to K, okay, so I'm, I'm taking this much smaller than, you know, stopping. So the, the modes that are much, smaller than, than, than Q, they, they affect the short modes in this way, okay? Let me call it this d epsilon, is the, is the delta, the effect of a delta, the power spectrum of delta from modes that are um, smaller than K, smaller than K, okay? Now, if you ask the question, so in, in other words, let me, what I'm trying to get at is the following. The, the, um, the, um, these will be integrals in Q, okay, of various things with Ks and Qs. I'm just trying to get you the, the leading, the biggest effect. What, the, the, there could be terms here with K and Q to whatever power coming from the Fs. I'm trying to tell you what powers appear, okay? So, and, the, and, and, and how you might guess. So I'm telling you what powers appear uh, and, uh, and, um, uh, and I'll tell you the reason. Okay, so then you might ask the question, why do you get something like this, for example? Just from dimensional analysis, okay, you can start having Ks and Qs, you can put more Ks and more Qs, okay, and always need to get the same. So this, remember, is a displacement, right? So this is the displacement cost, so this is so there's the long mode. It can create delta. It can create display. It can move things around. Okay, is the so this is the RMS displacements produced by the long mode. The Qs are the long modes here, no? up to k. The displacement of the long modes will they change the short ones? So, a question. So this is the displacement. For, the effect of the displacement. This is displacement k times the displacement produced by the long modes. Will this appear in the answer, yes or no, is the question. Well, the answer is it will not appear in the question, in, in the answer. Why? Because, I mean, 
if, if you shift the long modes all to, you're, you're, this is a very long mode, so they are shifting the short modes, that doesn't do anything, right? This is just putting somewhere else, but the statistical properties of these short modes are only going to be changed, the power spectrum of the short modes are only going to be changed if there is an overdensity by the equivalence principle. This other term just shifts things around. So this will not appear in the answer, okay? Now let's, so, so oh, 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 even though when you start looking at these Fs and so on, it looks like they're all of these ratios, this one will cancel out. They will not be there. This one will be there because it's the effect of the tides of the long mode. If there, if there is a tide, if there is a delta, it will affect. It, it will grow different and stuff like that. Okay, so this one will be there. This, just a sec. This one will not be there, okay? Now let, let me just, I, I want to uh, do... Um, the, before I take the question, uh, so, uh, so now let's ask the, 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 the ex exact same thing, epsilon, delta from the modes that are higher. So the integral from k to infinity of p of q d cube q, okay? And then there might be, for example, epsilon of the uh, same, same story, but I'm just now doing from, from k to infinity, the other part of the integral. P of Q, D Q Q over Q square. Okay, so you you now might ask the question: Does is this in the answer? Is this in the answer? Okay, in, I, it looks like everything might be in the answer, but the answer in the end no. This guy, for example, is not in the answer, and the reason this guy is not in the answer is that if, as I was telling somebody before, if you um, rearrange, now the question, we are now asking the opposite question. There is the K mode that we are interested in, and we want to know some, the effect of some much higher frequency stuff, okay? Now, this much higher frequency stuff will make over density very high and very low and very high and very low around, you know, fluctuating very fast in this region. They rearrange the math, make something very dense, something very, not dense, dense, but, it's rea but it rearranges the mass, okay? So from the point of view of the dynamics of the outside thing, how the mass is distributed, it doesn't matter, as I was telling you before. So the density is not something that matters, the overall mass. And so because you are conserving the mass, you might have high density, but it will be compensated by some low density uh, you know, nearby, just that the mass is the same. And so from the point of view of the long wavelength, now K, I'm thinking it as the long wavelength, whether or not the density is super, uh, it doesn't matter. Okay, so this, that's why it will not be in the answer, okay? This one will be in the answer, which is the comparison between the motions that the short mode produces and now the, the derivative of the long mode. So if, the, if, the, if this is the K mode and it's the long mode and this is the short mode and it's moving things around, it's like some sort of diffusion that will smooth out this long mode. So this is in the answer, okay? So the, the, when you look at these two things, for, from the point of view of the modes that are coming uh, from lower than k, this is what, this is the effect that they produce is given by this parameter. This is the part of the integral from q much bigger than k is dominated by this, okay? Any, the question, yes? Yeah, so what, the point is the following. It's not the displacement of the background. So the background, so there's this long mode, okay? It, it does two things. Um, so, you can, so to the extent that this displacement is just uniform, it does nothing, right? That's the part that is not important. The only important part is whether in your small region, the displacement produced by the long wavelength mode is different in the two ends, okay? So if you ask the question, you can... Think of the long mode and a little box over here. To the extent that this mode is so long that it moves the whole box like that, that part should not matter, okay? So the displacement itself of the box as a whole should not matter. 
What should matter is if the displacement is different from one side to the next, or if it's getting small, which is the same as the, the this divergence or the derivative of the displacement across this side. But the derivative of displacement is the same as this delta, okay? So the effect cannot be the overall motion. The only can be to the extent that the mode is not so long and the motion that it produces on the two sides is slightly different, okay? So it can only depend on derivatives of the motion, but not on the motion, okay? I'm just, all of this is about looking at the, the number of derivatives, okay? Good, so, so, so if you look at the one loop calculation, you see that it, if you take the, the integral uh, for modes that are uh, below Q, it's dominated by uh, K, is, uh, Q is below K, is dominated by, is this integral that matters, is this integral in the other limit. And now you can see that then as a result, but, but okay, uh, in our universe, um, the, this guy is the power spec, D, now DQ, Q, so this is the same as dq over q and the q cubed, right? This is the reason why I was always plotting delta, this, this big delta. This is the same as the, the, if I do the same trick, dq over q, q cubed. This is the power spectrum of this displacement, which I already showed you and I plotted here, okay? And they look very different, right? So when I am at high k, the power spectrum of the displacement is dropping, and so this, this is the integral that matters for high k. The, the integrand is dropping. The answer gives me something. It converges to something. And for this an answer, I'm, let's say I'm interested in this k is this guy. I need to integrate for all the q's that are bigger than k. So this part of the curve, this curve. Okay, so it's dropping. It'll give me something, okay? On the other hand, if I'm asking the question of uh, the effect of the modes longer than k, I need to integrate the power spectrum of delta, which is this other curve. So now I go back to some k here. I want to do now the integral of the modes that are longer than me on this side of the curve. So I'm dominated by this integral. Is this integral that I need to do? And I'm dominated now by the, the value of k. The integral will give me something, OK? So this answer, when I do, so um, um, I will get, you know, Final, finite answers for everything because of when I'm thinking about Q's longer than K, I need to do this integral, and this one is dominated in the UV, so it will give me the answer at K, while the one for the longer K is dominated in the IR, and so it will give me this K, and it will give, both of them will converge, okay? And it will give me some answer, okay? Now, had all of these things entered, I would be in trouble, right? Because if, if it's a power law spectrum, if this integral converges, this one doesn't, okay? Because if the thing is a power law, it will divert somewhere, okay? At least maybe give me a log or something, but, which would be, but if, if, I would be in trouble, okay? But is this fact that sometimes one thing matters, sometimes that other thing matters, that will make you that this answer will converge, okay? Will give you something, okay? Um, I, okay, great. So um, now, um, but but so you you can see that um, one thing to keep in mind then is that when you do these calculations, you will get a finite answer if both of these integral converges. It's the case in our universe, and it will be the case for some range. If I'm doing this power law universe, it will be the case for some range of uh, of ends. But if either, for example, if this integral starts to diverge when I go to infinity, I will not be able to get anything, okay? So there are some ends for which this integral will give me infinite and then I'm stuck, okay? Um, good. So in our universe, uh, this is so, uh, okay. And in a power law universe then, this integral will be dominated by k, this integral will be dominated by k, so you just evaluate this at k and both of them will give you the same answer. Will give you k over k nonlinear to the n plus three, okay, in both cases. So in the power law universe, both of these quantities are more or less the same size, okay? And there's some range of ends in which both of them will be, in, for the ends that for which both of them converge, they will give you the, the, same, the same size. In our universe, however, because it's not a power law, these different epsilons are not all of the same size, okay? 
And, and some of these terms, depending on what you're calculating, are much bigger than others. In particular, this one is usually much bigger than this one, OK? OK, so um, um, good. So this is uh, what I told you again, but I already told you on the board. Um, but, but so here in this, uh, I did not derive it, but if you, if you take, you can take uh, these f's for the displacement, say, and see specific, uh, split the integral, do the, do the um, actual, see, the, keep track of what coefficient you get in front of this and in front of that, and you get something. I'll put this online. Oh, I will tell you where, where my thing is, uh, wh where I'm putting things, because I never told you. Um, and you get something for the, and, and this is, if you just look at this slide, you will see the comparison between this simple expression, summing this plus this, and the final answer if you do the full integral. And also I leave you as an exercise that I don't put the, I, don't, I didn't put the, the so the, the exact same calculation, but not for the power spectrum of the displacement, which is the one that I quote the answer but for the power spectrum of the density, OK? So it's just an exercise. Figure out what F2 and F3 are, take those limits in which Q is much bigger than K, and so on, and see who are the quantities that appear. They will be all integrals in Q. Which ones appear and with with coefficients? The same ones will appear, and the coefficients will be slightly different, OK? So um, good. So, um, so the, 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 let, let me, the, this um, is, in, in this uh, plot, I'm showing you the corrections to the, 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 the same calculation, uh, but for the displacement up to higher order, because I just, this is just the answer. I, I, I hope you, you feel that if you sat down, you would be able to work out what the formulas would be and perhaps do the integrals or some of the integrals. What, what is the, the answer, um, so here I'm just telling you, for the power spectrum of, the, of this displacement, I, I, it's just, uh, so remember that you have, you can compute uh, S1, linear, two gives you, you know, combine two to form an, a, a second order displacement, combine three to get a third order displacement, and correlate them, and so on, to get various orders, and, uh, um, so uh, we, I, I told you the counting is this, so the, the linear theory is correlating two linear ones. The first correction is correlating either two second order ones and a one and a three, okay? Then if I go to, th to things that are power spectrum Q, I can correlate three two third order ones. This will give me power spectrum Q, but I also can do P4 and a second order one or I can go to fifth order and a one, and a linear one, okay? There, this, this is what's called the linear theory, or zero loop, one loop, two loop. And it's called loop because you're averaging over, the, uh, of this, of, over some set of modes and um, taking expectation value and integrating on them. This, is, this one contains just one integral. This contains two integrals. It's like a moment, over momentum, so it looks like a loop. So, and so on, okay? But so um, it doesn't matter. I mean, this is just whatever. But uh, I, I, the only thing that I wanted to show you is this is just you straight out do this calculation, OK? And what do you find? Uh, I, I just want to note for you how, and, and OK, and uh, the intuition then is that, uh, up to now, the only thing that we have to guide us is this k over k nonlinear estimate of how things would go. And also, some it looks like then all of these terms are supposed to be of the same size, OK? This one should be smaller than this one. They should be getting small, at least in the place where this makes sense, they should be getting smaller and smaller and smaller. These are, should be all the same, OK? But that's not what happens in, the, in our universe, OK? So if you just straight out do that, this one is the 1, 3 term. So it's one, somebody that belongs to here is this guy. This one is then the other one right there is the one five term, which is supposed to be, uh, you know, quite much smaller. Com this one over here, for example, is the two two term, which is this guy over here, okay, which is supposed it lives in this uh, line, 
but it's smaller than this guy that lives in the next line, okay? So if you compare this guy with the red curve, you would see this guy is even smaller than the 1, 5. The 4, 2 also lives in this line. It's way smaller than this guy, okay? We're always looking at this well in the linear regime, somewhere here, okay? So this, this guesstimate of how things should be looks completely screwed up, okay? That's all I wanted to. But, okay, fine. That's what we're doing. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, so this is, um, this is, uh, is relevant in that the curves will look different for, for um, yeah. So it's relevant, but same kind of inconsistencies you will find in the other. Okay, so, so um, let's, let's take, so next class I will try to make sense of this thing, try to see how we can, uh, we can uh, do something slightly better. But, but le let, me, let me now, in what remains of the time, uh, discuss a, a little bit more uh, some of these inconsistencies or something, these weird things, okay? So, and in particular, let me um, discuss a little bit the, the, the um, 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 so, so let, let, I, I will focus now on the part, the effect of the modes that are high, high Q on the low K, okay? The, the UV part of these integrals. Uh, so, um, and so I, I was, uh, the first thing, the first thing, uh, j just to point out, j just uh, examples of how this, uh, you should start worrying about this kind of thing. So you have this formula, you have this. I told you, you, you will get finite, finite answers as long as this integral converges, which needs to be that n plus 3 is bigger than 0, okay? So that this guy uh, is dominated by the k and not the 0. If not, you will diverge in the IR, okay? And then you also need that this n plus 3 um, minus 2 be smaller than 0 so that this guy is dominated in the IR. So the, the, this perturbation theory, if you are doing for a power law universe of scale n, it will only converge, the one loop thing will only converge for n's between minus 3 and minus 1, okay? is in that range that both this one gives a finite answer and this one gives a finite answer, okay? Now, what happens if I'm outside of this range? In particular, let's discuss what happens if I'm in the range in which n is, uh, not, is bigger than minus 1 and this guy diverges. So this is just telling you that in this, in, in, in this example, the, this remi remember this is the RMS displacements. If you put a power spectrum with n, bigger than uh, minus 1, uh, the RMS displacement when you integrate her over all momentum gives infinite. That's what this is. And so the whole thing doesn't, make any, doesn't give a good answer, okay? Is this a particularly bad, uh, is, is this a terrible uh, thing? Well, you can run a simulation, and the simulation doesn't do anything. It's just fine, okay? So, um, so and it's related to the thing that I was telling you before. So, I just, the, the source of this divergency in this example is that the RMS displacement on the small scale is giving you infinite. But in the real, in the gravitational collapse, what's really happening? The thing collapses and it sticks together, okay? So the thing doesn't go past and be infinite displacement. In any case, it sticks together. So there's no problem, really. So this might diverge, but the real answer is just fine, okay? So those are, that's the power spectrum that you can get in the simulation, blah, 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 okay, some function of k over k in a linear, you get something, you can compute, but this does not even allow you to put a line in this plot, yes? Yeah, I agree, exactly, so now, exactly, so, Obviously, okay, what is going on? What is going on? I'm doing this, I use this formula, okay, but when I do this, 
when I do this integral, I'm doing integral over all Qs. And that's exactly the reason I'm discussing this limit, the limit in which I'm taking the UV part. Now, we know this perturbation theory is not supposed to be working. It's not describing the right physics at, for the small scales. So what is going on in, inside of this integral is wrong in any case. Better um, proof that is wrong is that if I do the actual simulation, there's nothing wrong. It's not like infinite displacement. So I'm doing something wrong here. So I need to learn how to fix this something wrong, OK? That's all. Obviously, I'm doing something wrong, OK? Now, of course, you want to say, OK, obviously, I cannot take this integral to infinity. The true answer must be somehow this. There's some range in which this is the right answer when you're still in the linear regime. So let me include that part. Then, then I don't know. OK, so let me on, only stop there, OK? So that's reasonable. That's reasonable. And so, but we'll try to do something better, because now if, if I'm trying to do an example like this, and I cut it off, the answer will, of course, the whole thing was going to diverge. So it will depend on how I cut it off. And if I want to do some sort of precision thing, and now I have this lamb, I'm invented out of my, what I'm going to do? Disaster, OK? So I better figure out a slightly better way to do. But that's, so in other words, all that you have to do is learn how to stop this integral somehow and you know, fix it somewhere else, and that's it. But try to, um, OK, so, um, so let, let, let me, let me, um, let me um, so exactly this is the problem. The problem is that this perturbation theory is not working, obviously is not working uh, in, the, in the UV. It's not supposed to work. When I do these loop integrals, I'm integrating over all momenta. And so I'm introducing in my answer mistakes, because I'm introducing the effect of modes, which I'm saying the solution is something, but I know that's not the solution. And when I integrate, I'm polluting everything, OK? So that's all that's happening. Um, and uh, so we just need to fix that. It's not a big deal. So, but because I don't have time today to fix it, I will, uh, I will just show you exactly, you know, just to make sure you get this intuition, uh, which I guess it's obvious, but I'll show you uh, more examples where you can see that you're doing something crazy. OK? So l l let me just take, uh, so this answer here, this is, if you just, uh, another way of, uh, you know, similar story. I, now it's the power spectrum of the power spectrum of uh, the density. Okay, computed at one loop, two loop, uh, etc. Linear theory. Okay, and um, I want to show. I want to point out uh, uh, the following. So look, this is the linear theory power spectrum. I mean, this is divided by this no wiggle thing. So it, th that's why the linear has. So this is the linear power spectrum, the, the power spectrum you put in divided by the example with no wiggle. So even the linear thing is not one, it's something, OK? Uh, so you get this. One loop gives you that. Two loop gives you that. This is the actual answer of the simulations, OK? So you can see that it doesn't look at least that it's getting any better, OK? So if you look at a scale of k of 0.2, for example, you know, you get linear theory, oh, it's pretty bad. You go one loop, you go up here. You go two loop, you go up there. If you keep going, you will keep going like crazy. It's not getting better, OK? Um, and OK, you might say, perhaps this is too much of the nonlinear regime. Maybe I should only look at the scales over here, where everybody gives the same answer, right? So a linear one loop, so there is working, OK? But then what the hell I'm doing anything, right? If I'm just going to stop at the, at the linear theory, that we all already know how to do. But, I want to find some way in which when I'm adding more, I'm spending more time doing some calculation, at least it's getting better, OK? If there's no place where it's getting better, it's just a, too depressing, OK? So hopefully there is some, I will find some way in which I keep get, things keep getting better, OK? At least in some regime. Ho obviously, at super high k, it will never get any better, OK? Now, you might think, oh, here is, uh, is um, uh, you know, pretty high k, so maybe it will never work here. But le let me just show you this plot to to to, um, to um, tell you that perhaps you should think otherwise. And it's the following. So here, what 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 uh, what has been done is the following. So you just take the full answer of the n-body simulation. It gives you some density field, okay, and you take 
Then this Seldovich approximation, which is just the linear theory in Lagrangian space, okay? Everything just moves. And then you ask the and you com compute the density in that thing. So the simulation with just one step, okay? And you ask the question, what is the correlation coefficient? You correlate these two fields and try to see how, how uh, similar to each other the two maps are, okay? So this, this correlation coefficient is a an, is an, uh, number between minus one and one. If it's one, it means they are the same, or a rescaled version of each other, okay? So this is a plot of the correlation coefficient, okay? That you can see, this is if you correlate with just linear perturbation theory of, uh, of uh, in Eulerian space, this is with the Seldovich approximation. At k of 0.2, which is where this thing is looking like it's making no progress whatsoever, still the correlation coefficient between the linear theory answer and the full simulation is 0.90 something. So the linear theory really is almost correct. Okay, it's a little bit of a rescaled version of the final answer because the correlation coefficient is not exactly, well, there's a little bit the correlation coefficient is not exactly uh, one, but it's very close. So how come I'm doing all this work? In, in linear theory, it's almost okay, and I'm making bad stuff, and everything is terrible, but it's almost, the answer was almost there to start. How can I be so dumb, okay? How is, or so unlucky, what's going on? So, um, um, so, so, yeah, so, up to now, I, th I hope I, and it's all related to this, okay? I, I've convinced you that if you keep adding these, these things, it doesn't look like it's doing any better. But however, it's like super depressing because even the linear theory was pretty good. It was just, the, the faces were all right and everything, it's just the rescaled version. And, and even so, you can seem not to be able to do anything better. Uh, yeah. Is there a linear or This guy? Here. No, it's a low, it's linear. Yeah, linear. So it's 2LPT, it would be better, and you would have to do log, log, plot to see some difference between R minus 1 in log, you would need. Um, so, um, but there was a rescaling between a K depend, so this correlation coefficient, if it's 1, it just tells you that the two fields are, are have the same faces, but they can be, uh, a, a, a multiple of each other. So in reality, what's happening is that this Seldovich is a risk, non-stochastic rescaling of the true answer, right? So, um, so for example, delta that you computed in the Seldovich approximation compared to delta in the nonlinear, okay? So if the correlation coefficient is one, this means that uh, these two things are proportional to one another, but it could be a proportionality dependent on K. The correlation coefficient will drop if there is some stochastic piece that you don't know how to compute. That, so this is just, that curve is telling you that the part that is not looking like Seldovich is very small. There is a rescaling, which is k-dependent. Uh, so if we were managed to be able to compute this, we should be able to get very good because it's almost the same. So that, and, uh, okay, so um, this, yeah? Yeah. If, if you, for example, solve the uh, Euler, Eulerian equation in a different way, of, for example, the Fourier equation, if you have a, a different... Uh, yeah, the simulation is solving them. When I'm comparing with the simulation, it's solving in a different way and then getting... Example, the, the perturbation, yeah. The same and the, the same and the other one. But, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so true. So, this is same... Uh, let me, let me skip this. This I'll leave you as an exercise. So uh, what, what is this is um, you can, let's take another simple example, um, which is a spheric, the spherical collapse. So let me take us over density, spherical over density, and make it collapse. This one you can solve analytically. You don't need any, you don't need any computer, okay? It's in fact like the same as the universe, the FRW solution. You solve it, okay? Now you look at the, at the, say for an under density. Do this, that thing for, that's what this is showing, this for an under density, and compare this with this perturbation theory solution. You, uh, compare it. And then you will see that 
you know, these are the various, or, this is delta perturbation theory versus delta exact. It should be one. Various orders above, below, above, is not converging to anything. So this series that we are doing in some regime is not converging to anything. So, um, or not, yeah, not, not a good thing. So that's the, that, and that then pollutes everything in the integrals. Um, let me, another example that I thought was pretty nice is this paper, uh, Martin White and uh, Matt McQueen late, uh, did the, the following exercise. Again, this just to see what's going on. So they did everything in one plus one dimension. So it's just space and time, okay? So now instead of a bunch of particles, you can think of them just as planes, okay? So in 3D, if you want to think about it, you, you just have like planes of matter, Okay, so th th they did perturbation theory in one plus one dimension. But another way of thinking about it is that you just have planes of matter that are only allowed to, to uh, move in the x direction, okay? Um, wh why is that an interesting example to think about? Is because, and then you, you can solve the equations perturbatively. They also did it in the, in the computer, okay? And you, you find the same kind of story. But what's interesting is the following. Now, you know that for a plane of matter, the force is the same everywhere. The plane, it doesn't matter how far away you are, okay? So if you are computing the force on this plane by this guy, it doesn't matter where this guy, as long as it's on this side, it's the same, okay? So, um, so, um, so this you can use to show that the Seldovich approximation, the, the things just move... The Seldovich approximation, in some sense, is computing the force at the very beginning and you know, leaving the same uh, force forever. But in this particular, in one plus one is exact until the things cross. Because it doesn't matter if you are getting the wrong location, the forces are fine, OK? So at least until the shell crossing, uh, the Seldovich approximation is the exact answer in one plus one, OK? So you have the exact answer. You also have the, in, in Eulerian, you, you, don't, you have to expand and do it. And, so, and then you have the simulation, OK? So uh, um, this, this dark curve over here is the Seldovich, the density you compute with the Seldovich approximation. So which is the exact, and then you see a bunch of curves there is if you do, now in one plus one, you can do a, a lot of loops because the integrals are very simple, OK? So they went to, I don't know, 20 loops, whatever. And so you can see that uh, in the Eulerian. So Eulerian perturbation theory, you need to do it in the loops. In the Lagrangian, you know the final solution from the very beginning, OK? And so this is the final solution in the Lagrangian. This is all the loops. And as you put more and more, you're getting closer and closer to the final. So the SPT, if you add all of the loops in the Eulerian, they just converge to the Seldovich answer, which is this one, OK? So this perturbation theory is giving you this. This is the answer of the simulation, OK? It's not converging to the right answer, OK? In other words, uh, so here is the relative re difference between the power that you compute, the power spectrum you compute, and the simulation, OK? And you can see, even though you do Seldovich, which is this infinite, you, you resum. So you, you might ask the question, I, I, I'm, I'm solving these uh, equations perturbatively. Is it because I've stopped? And if I keep adding more and more, uh, if I resum my diagram? So this is the question. Perhaps I'm not clever enough. Perhaps the thing is, I, there are some terms in this series somewhere that are slightly bigger than the other. Let me go fishing, get them all, resum some of them, and perhaps everything will work. That you might hope. That's not what's going on, OK? Here, at least, at least in 1 plus 1, it's, always, it's not what's going on. I have the sum of all these series, OK? And that's even, even so, it's not the right answer, OK? So you know, you're trying to use the series outside the range of where it's valid, OK? So even if you sum it all, you're not getting the right answer, OK? So that, but I think in 1 plus 1, everything is very, um, yeah, so you can, you, you, there's no place to hide. So anyway, so I think, um, OK, yeah? After shell crossing, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, OK, so um, let me decide what to do in the next. Uh, 
Mm. Ba, ba, ba. Zero minutes. Okay, so so I think I, I, I think I've convinced you uh, that there's something fishy going on, and uh, and uh, two more statements. One, uh, I, I already ask you. Um, um, I already um, I already show you this P15 being so large compared to so looks anomalously large. Another related uh, st statement is the following. So if you look at the integral that, so if you look at the, int you, you do this uh, the same type of analysis at the, for the two loops. And you ask the question, what is the shape of, what is the thing that you're integrating over when, uh, when, uh, um, when, uh, when, you're, when you're doing, the, what is this integral? I told you that at one loop, it was the power spectrum of this displacement. So it was this, the integrand was this curve over here that if you're integrating at high k, this is dropping and it will converge to something. The analogous thing for uh, when you do at two loops and you look at what is the integral in there is this other term, which now already is very bad because now this guy is, if I'm, if I'm interested in k of 0.1, it's dominated in the UV. It's, this guy is picking most of this contribution from the high momentum, which is where we don't trust the thing. So uh, the whole perturbation theory. So um, the, the other thing that I want to stress then is that as you go to higher loop, the, the problem is getting worse in that we were lucky enough in our universe that at one loop, these two integrals you know, converged. And if you look, if you ask the question how much from the case that are in the nonlinear regime, how much of the part of the integral, how big is this? It's not so big at one loop, okay? But once you go to two loops, for example, it starts becoming much worse. The integral itself is now more peaked, more, it's progressively more and more peaked in the UV, and you're getting more and more of the contributions from the part that the whole thing that you're doing is, makes no sense, okay? So as you go to the whole thing, so the summary is that the whole thing, it doesn't work because um, obviously at high k, this is not converging to the true answer, as I showed you in the 1 plus 1 and so on. So at high k, and it's obvious, it's not, you're not getting the right answer. And second, as you go to higher and higher loops, your integrands are more and more, get more and more of their contribution from the parts that is junk. Okay, so as you go, instead of making things better, you're making things worse because you are putting more and more of the junk in the integral. Okay, so you're better off stopping in the linear theories, which is kind of what this was. Uh, let me, let, you know, if you look at this original curve, one, two. So you're better off stopping, not doing anything, and this is the reason. Okay, so but okay, we can do better than that, and so. Uh, I want to do one, uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to go over by five minutes, okay, because I want to uh, tell you one other thing, which is um, um, another, another way you can, uh, so another, another way you can uh, see that there are effects that you're not capturing when you're doing this, when you're doing these uh, solutions, in the perturbation solutions. Um, so, as I told you, what physically is happening is that, um, that um, um, you, have the, you have these regions that collapse and form some objects, these halos that you were discussing so much with, uh, with uh, David Weinberg. Okay? You form these halos. And things do not just fly and explode. and They just form these halos. Okay? And so perhaps a picture you should keep in mind is that you, know, you had all these particles they collapse to form some sort of halo. Perturbation theory you know, brings them together, but they will not get the right answer for the motions inside the halo. So if you do the computation in perturbation theory, you'll end up with particles that are you know, in some region here. In fact, I have the plot somewhere. Um, so these, the, the blue are where things end up in the simulation. The other points are where they end up if you do the Seldovich approximation. or the, So they end up around here. And you can never hope, really, to, to, that the perturbation theory is not converging to the right answer. It's not going to give you better and better results for the motion inside this halo. That all is just junk, OK? 
So, but now, if you, if you think that perhaps, or part of the problem is that you're forming halos, um, and you're making some mistake that you will never fix uh, of the size. Let's call, this is, say, the virial radius of the halo. There's a mistake in these motions of the size, at least of this virial radius of the halo that you are not getting right, OK? So for each halo of a given size, you might be making a mistake of the size of the virial radius. And if you want to estimate the size of the mistake, perhaps one good estimate would be to sum up the number of halos that you have as a function of size. You weight by the typical size of the error that you're making and uh, estimate in this way. And this is a good estimate. But I want to put, so um, the error that you're making, you would be integrating the, the number of halos as a function of mass in mass times some error that you're making as a function of the mass, okay? The bigger halos that are bigger, you're making bigger errors, stuff like this. So there, perhaps there is a formula like this, okay? Very reasonable that there is a formula like this. I want to point out one fact about this formula. I don't know if you did this with David or not, but there are some simple formulas for, or some uh, reasonable formulas for, for this mass function, this press sector. It's called the press sector mass function, which tells you how many objects there are as a function of the mass, OK? And uh, you can ask this uh, by thinking of these random walks and when the density crosses. Uh, so some of you might be familiar with this, OK? So I want to point out just one aspect of that formula. So if you remember, um, this formula looks that for the number density, dn dm, is something like some sort of exponent. It has a piece that looks like an exponential of minus this delta critical, which is a number of order one, divided by sigma square, which is the RMS var variance of the mass, smooth on a scale of the size of the object. So you're asking the question, how likely it is that if I have some region of a given size which encloses this math, the density can cross one. And because it was uh, Gaussian initial conditions, this is some sort of e to the minus, oh, sigma, e to the minus, OK? It's coming from there, OK? So, uh, so the formula is something like this. I, th those of you who are, I, I recommend that you try to find it and look at it. But I just want, want to point out that this sigma, then, what is it? The sigma square, remember, was this integral of the power spectrum, p of q, now with some sort of, uh, um, you know, you have to average this uh, smooth, only the modes that, uh, you know, smooth over some size r that corresponds to the mass m. So it's some integral of the power spectrum that goes into here, because it's how likely it is to have an overdensity of some size. Um, and um, uh, so, so the, the, the one thing that, 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 that I, I wanted to point out is that uh, in this formula, the power spectrum is in the denominator of this exponential. So if there are terms of this size that have to do with the number of objects that you're actually forming, which, of course, there are these terms like this in the People call this this one halo term, this halo model, terms that depend on how, how many halos of a given mass. This cannot be expanded in the powers of the power spectrum because it's one over one, e to the minus one over power spectrum. There's no series of these in powers of the power spectrum. And the perturbation theory was a series in the power spectrum. So clearly, this stuff you're never going to get from there, OK? So OK, that's another. So, Obviously, the physics that's going on has to do with the formation of these halos. And this is not something that uh, you can capture with this, no matter what, OK? Because it's not expandable in powers of the power spectrum. So clearly, you know, this is getting worse as you add more things. And furthermore, there are clear physical effects that are very reasonable, should be there, and, can, and are not. And all of this is kind of uh, together, but I'll stop there.